seeing as we haven't looked in my bag for a while, isn't it time for a little bit of a rummage? No Englishman of Yorkshire descent would dare dream step outside on his adventures without a cloth cap. This one is a very yuppie barber. So I'm counting my goods and chattels as individual items as best as I can. See if you can guess what the total is going to be. I am making this sound like some kind of nerd episode of uh, Sesame Street. Um, basically, there's quite a lot of items in my bag that aren't going to be included in the kind of spread that I'm doing on the floor. The boring stuff like iPhone, inappropriately warm tweed jacket, although it's not inappropriately warm today. Now this isn't as yuppish as this because this is actually made by Cordings of Piccadilly. Quite rock and roll. It's owned by Eric Slowhand Clapton. Dress shirts, always Margaret Howe. An undisclosed number of socks and pants Three t-shirts, Marks and Spencers. Jeans, 501s only. I think a custodial sentence should be handed out to men over 40 who wear pre-kind of worn jeans, skinny jeans, and any product in their hair. One swimming trunk, my CPAP machine for my sleep apnea, a wash bag with the very minimum amount of ingredients, and two cases to hold all of this stuff. No belts, no sunglasses. I'll only lose them or they'll trip me up at airports alongside things like moisturisers or indeed any unnecessary unguent. The second of three Smythson products I take on the road with me, my passport holder and passport, a matching Smythson wallet with about five things of use in it, a pair of Paul Smith glasses with a very old prescription that I never wear except for when I'm trying to look clever. My MacBook Pro, this latest version is actually now up to the task of 4K editing which makes me very happy. I would never leave home without my multi-dongle mentioned in the film above. Okay, so busy boy at the moment, so four times four terabyte drive, Spitfire samples, my private samples, a composing project drive, and my vlogging project drive. BBC SO on this tasty new Spitfire SSD, and a five terabyte rugged backup for all my sampling and 4K footage gathered in the field. It's bulky, but it makes my life just so much happier. I take a UK power block with me, so I only need one or two plug converters. This is great when I've got to charge loads of things up. Two power book adapters. The USB one I use as a backup because I can always get a local power adapter for it. Pin sentry, make sure money's in the right place. My lifesaver's AirPods. I mean that. Well, certainly from doing porridge, I basically became an angry traveller and I had to kind of look at myself because I was going to end up getting collared. I just got into podcasts and these AirPods and my phone, that precious time, well, not precious time, that really, that dead time when you're just sitting on a tarmac waiting to take off. It has been rescued by the likes of Joe Rogan, Joey Diaz and Bill Burr. I also have a backup pair. These are now my second pair of Bang & Olufsen headphones, my preferred kind of working headphones when I'm on the road. They fold flat, they sound great. I don't use the noise cancellation. I love them because they have a replaceable headphone cable. Business cards from other people business cards from me. These guys make an excellent camera battery charger. Obviously I carry a load of batteries around with me, but you can't wait to see them. And this gets them back up to full power really quickly. My Native Instruments mini keyboard, excellent as I don't need to drag a secondary controller for dynamics and expression around with me. For my sampling adventures, you can simply never go wrong with a pair of Match 414s. The case comes with all of the gubbins that you need. They're multi-patterned. Just need to make sure wherever you're going is blessed with phantom power. Not the best mic in my cupboard, but my most beloved, the trusty Coles 4038 ribbon mic, named after its two inventors, two blokes from the BBC called Colin and Leslie. This I use to record voiceovers like the one you're hearing, the Apogee Duet, beautifully designed. Problem with the Apogee, as I mentioned before, is it requires a proprietary cable. I lost a kind of quite specific cable on this trip and basically lost a day trying to find a replacement as a consequence. Absolute nightmare. This is the voiceover mic I take on the road, a trusty Shure SM9B. Its rear and side deflection makes it ideal for voice overization in poor acoustic environments. Environments. It's sturdy and not that expensive if it gets damaged. Industry standard Sennheiser radio mics, both transmitter and receiver, excellent battery life and resilient to being banged about in your back pocket. This is my backup lav mic, an off-the-shelf Sennheiser. This is my preferred, the DPA, but it, the very expensive jack end got damaged in transit, so I was really glad of my Sennheiser backup. This is carried with my SD cards and headphone adapters in my Magic Tin. Right, the moment you've been waiting for, camera batteries. But I also carry these battery chips that plug directly into the wall and give you unlimited power for your cameras. But be careful not to pull these out as your cameras will lose the films you've just made. Okay, next one, hands up. It's a bit tarty. The problem with DJI drones is you need to use your phone 
connected to the remote controller in order to navigate it and see what you're photographing. There is nothing more stressful than being away from your family, your family calls, and the thing that you're meant to speak to your family on is controlling the thing that's worth a thousand dollars that's several hundred feet in the air. So I got one of these, which is about half the price of the drone again. And which drone am I currently using? It's the latest DJI Mavic 2 with a Hasselblad lens. This thing really does take amazing film, even in low light, but it does also add a host of independent and codependent items to my kit bag. My macro lens, which I commonly use for B-roll, and a newbie, the Sony RX100 version 7, which I've attached a cage and this cold shoe to. More about that in a moment. And I've got this crappy little mic for it. But don't fear, Humphrey is never far behind, as is this new Rode Video Mic Pro, which I'm starting to really like because its off-axis deflection is really quite impressive. The trusty GH5, which I brought along with some camera companions. So about the, the cameras, basically the camera that you've been seeing me kind of run around with is this one here, the GH5. Really, really heavy. And I complained of started to suffer from tendonitis and then it got to a point where I couldn't actually pick up a cup of coffee at home. I've decided to take kind of action and I bought instead this Sony RX100 version 7. I've been waiting for them to have a mic input. It's great, these cameras are so popular you can get third party cages so you can put a cold shoe on, have a half decent mic which I think is okay. Now, now the reason for having so many different cameras is they all have their kind of merits. Now GH5 Great for image stabilization, you can attach a microphone to it, but it's really heavy. GH5S doesn't have image stabilization, but has a much better sensor, so it's much better in low light. Uh, this is a lot lighter, has image stabilization, but also has incredible, we look here, the focus is insanely quick, which is just makes it a really ideal vlogging camera. However, there are annoying things like the record button, if you can see, is like there. So if I'm kind of holding the camera like this, you can't actually see if it's recording, so I'm still getting used to that. Let's have a look at how these kind of compare. Right, okay. So, things to look out for, murky areas, is how these cameras handle the murk. You'll probably see with this one, uh, there's not as much noise as this one. Um, and this one, I actually think it drops its frame rates, so it starts getting a bit stroby. Oh, nice red looking face there on this one. Okay, it's very murky out here, so this should be helpful. Um, check out with an image stabilization. And for that, you need to kind of really look at the background, not me in the foreground. Great thing about these cameras is I can really move them around and I kind of pretty much always stay in frame so I don't really have to worry about it. Whereas this, it's quite easy for me to cut myself off like that, so I have to really hold it at kind of arm's length. Now this is a really good test, this area here, because it's really murky. How does that look on the GH5S? How does that look on the GH5? And how does that look on the RX100? I'm out of breath because this is actually incredibly heavy. Look, have a... <laughs> the thing I didn't want to do with my vlog when I started it was putting me in the center, didn't want to have cameras on me. It's kind of depressing, seeing myself getting older and fatter. Um, but I realized that actually if you turn them, if you don't have a central focal point, uh, they become incredibly kind of nauseating to watch. So something that is a real test of image stabilization is actually to take this central focus point, focal point, out of the picture. Now, I'm always kind of conscious to kind of steady cam my arms a little bit so that we, it's not just kind of going like that, if you know what I mean. But just see how those handle stability of images, particularly in low light, and this is, should be, when we get the nicest images, beautiful Los Angelian light. Right, just done a piece of camera, really annoyed that this thing basically, one, the really big drawback of the Sony is for some reason it only records for five minutes. And that's gonna be, have, to, have to be something I really look at. And I can't really see the record button in this light at all. With this one, it's just blinking on the right hand of the screen. It's very kind of obvious. It's, it's a far away from the camera body. As you can see, this is actually buried at the bottom of the screen. So you can't actually see if it's recording or not. And I, I just don't have a clue at what point it stopped recording. So GH5S, great image quality, the best of these three cameras, but no image stabilization. GH5, next best image quality. Uh, RX100, hopefully, if I can get my head around using it, is going to be save me from having 
tendonitis. Also, on this camera, kind of very easy to kind of uh, frame yourself badly, whereas this, I mean, I can really, really walk around and just never fall out of frame. Um, problem with the ultra wide angle lenses is uh, it's fine if you're, this is kind of what I look like, it still adds a few pounds, but you suddenly gain like two stone by walking off, uh, off axis because of the distortion. Check that out, for example. Um, massive amounts of kind of forced perspective. So when I'm off axis like this, it is forcing perspective on my tummy, which is, has been a bit depressing over the last couple of years of um, recording this vlog. Right, camera shootout over. So on this trip, I also bought two GH5Ss, which are excellent for locked off shots, which I'm using for this film at the moment, so you can't see them. And of course, a portable tripod on which this camera viewing this shot is currently sat. Two Joby grips. Finally, it's time to tot up my connecting leads. And let's not forget, courtesy of Apple computers, an absolute deluge of dongles, bringing it to a grand total of well over 159 items and the total weight of this haul is around 50 pounds of luggage. And I daren't tot up what uh, this particular kit bag has uh, cost me over the years, but I think uh, it's films like the 9,000 foot piano, as it is now called, that make it all the more worthwhile. Anyway, as I say, if you haven't seen that video, do take a look, and we've got another great video from LA coming up. I want to do a roundup of LA, but there's some really exciting stuff coming up over the next couple of weeks, so subscribe if you haven't done already, ding that bell if you want to be notified the next time put a video up and one of those always massively appreciated. See you next time.